Thank you for choosing AMC Theaters, where we make movie moments AMC amazing. Today is Wednesday, June 2nd. This is a recap of the stock market activities today, or shall we say a recap for the zoo activities today. Because ladies and gentlemen, we have lots of apes running around, running loose out of their cages. We have banana peels all over the place, people slipping over, getting injured. It's a mess out there. But let's start with this. I hope everybody had a happy Memorial Day weekend, a long weekend. You enjoyed the barbecue, the sunshine, the family. And if you did not have a good Memorial Day weekend, rest assured, we have lots of holidays coming up. So if this one wasn't good for you, the good news is you'll have a better shot at the next one. Speaking of shots, pour yourself another shot of espresso or better yet, of your favorite adult beverage because you're gonna need it. We have a boring market. It's a shortened trading weekend, excuse me, shortened trading week, meaning that we entered with the expectations that we're not gonna see huge volume, we're not gonna see lots of activities, and the path for least resistance will be higher. Yet we are not expecting explosive moves in the major indices. However, there is another sub-story in the market, two sub-stories, that we should pay attention to. Sub-story number one, of course, the obvious AMC. Sub-story number two, the Federal Reserve. Let's start with the latter. The Federal Reserve, as uh, you might have heard, is dumping corporate bonds it purchased during the pandemic. Now, the market is not reacting negatively to this news, but it is a sign for upcoming tightening in the monetary policy. Speaking of, perhaps the market doesn't care about corporate bond purchasing, but the market cares about the cocaine operation, which will be halted by tapering. So the market is paying attention to tapering. And today we have another defector in the Federal Reserve. Remember, defector number one is Dallas Fed Bob Kaplan, a.k.a. the chairman. We call him the chairman because he likes chairs. He likes to sit on those expensive chairs, $25,000 a piece, while talking about the plight and the struggles of the poor and the middle class. The man has a sadistic sense of humor. But anyways, now we have another one. Philly Fed President Harker. By the way, how many Fed presidents do we have? It's like a cult already. But now we have Harker, and he's saying perhaps we should start thinking about thinking about thinking about tapering assets purchasing programs. And of course, the market is not going to like that. If yet more Fed presidents follow this route of Kaplan and Harker, the market is going to have a problem. We have very important economic data coming up tomorrow and Friday regarding the jobs market. And if these numbers come out hot, you will see more taper talking. Tapering will not end the bull market. Tapering will wound the bull market because the market has been rallying based on two catalysts. It's actually one, but you can break it down into two. It is the cocaine operation from the Federal Reserve, printing money out of thin air and blowing it all over the financial system. But there are two ways the monetary system works. The number one pump is the quantitative easing, including the cocaine operation. Number two, keeping interest rates as low as possible for as long as possible. Number one is not that scary to the market. It will wound the market. It will stop the bull from running, but it will not be the fatal shot. The fatal shot will be raising interest rates. We're not there yet, but we will get there. And by the way, the Federal Reserve says, don't worry, don't walk out of the casino yet, because if it becomes clear that we are about to taper the cocaine operation or raising interest rates, we will let you know in advance. We will give you advanced warning to plan ahead. Ask yourself a question. Are you that stupid? Will the Federal Reserve tell you and I when the tapering will happen? Of course not. They will tell their buddies in Wall Street first. We will react next after the sell-off already takes place. Let's move on to the most important story of the day. AMC. And again, it is AMC. It is not a short squeeze. It is not GameStop. It is not Reddit. It is not the meme mania. It is AMC. They are trying to replicate 
the move in AMC and other stocks, some managing to do successfully, others not, but this started as an AMC rally and it could evolve into a resurrection of the meme rally we saw earlier this year. But that doesn't matter because it is an AMC story. It started with AMC and it will end with AMC. And I have three points on my notes here to discuss with you regarding AMC. Number one, are you ready for it? Because the apes are going to start screaming now. I joined the apes for about 12 minutes today because I bought AMC and I sold it 12 minutes later. It was a quick in and out trade with about 20% profit. And I'll show you how I use the technicals, specifically the Fibonacci levels, to enter this trade. Because for now, it's becoming a freak show. And even disciplined traders and investors are seeing this as an opportunity to make a quick buck but i still have an enormous amount of puts for amc i traded them last week i bought the ten dollars puts expiration date june 18th i traded those last week and i closed them at 40 percent profit yesterday i bought them again and today these options were actually trading higher as the stock exploded to insane levels, almost doubling today. Yet these options held their value pretty good. And the reason is I studied the options grid and I am playing the implied volatility. It's a different game. Lots of you contact me saying that you bought the 20 puts, 25 puts, 35, whatever it is, and you ended up losing money. You're losing. What do you do now? This is not the same game I'm playing. It was too early to play traditional put options trade against the AMC until today. If you open puts today, you're likely going to get rewarded pretty soon. And I will show you all of these technical signals that I am watching. So I joined the apes for about 12 minutes today and I re-evolved into a human beings once again. In out, quick 20% profit. In addition, I have my puts playing the implied volatility once the stock starts to break down. And that will happen very, very soon. The last point in my notes for AMC is a question from the viewer saying that his son joined the apes and bought AMC and he made a nice profit for himself and he sold at the top last Friday. And he's saying here that that was a good choice. Well, probably not looking at what the stock did today. So perhaps your son is complaining to you right now. Why did you make me have paper hands, daddy? And you don't have an answer for that, do you? Well, here is the answer. Number one, your son should understand that this this is a momentum play, very unique in conditions. We don't see these conditions in regular markets. They happen every once in a while, perhaps once in a decade, where we see historic bubbles, the likes of the dot-com bubble and the current bubble that we're in right now. This is not a fundamental story because there are fundamentals pointing out that the movie theater business is dead and it will never come back. For example, credit card spending among consumers recovered in all aspects in the economy, with the exception of movie theaters. On the other hand, we saw a big box office weekend. It's not really big, but from a pandemic era perspective, it was a big weekend. And the reason is the ad performance of the movie, whatever it's called, Quiet Place 2, whatever that is, who cares? But could that be a signal that the movie theater business is coming back? Regardless, the stock valuation and the movement in the stock has absolutely nothing to do with the fundamentals. So here's what you do in these kind of trades. You always set your profit goal. What will be satisfactory for you? 30% profit, 50% profit, 100% profit. But set those goals rationally and be reasonable with your expectations. Once you reach that goal, and I don't know what your son's goal was, if he had a goal at all, probably not. He's perhaps waiting for the stock to go to the moon like everybody else. Those are the ones who are going to get slaughtered. So your son did the paper hand, the smarty pants way, and he's going to get to keep his profits. But the reason why we say set goals, because once you reach those goals, whatever that goal is, 80% profit, you take the majority of the chips off the table and you leave a small portion of the house money and let that roll so you don't have that regret that you got out too early. But there are two ways you can track the movement in AMC via the option market and via the technicals to trade the tops in the name. For example, how did we know that 30 to 35 will be the top last week via the options grid? How did I know that 73 will be the top today? The options market and the technicals. And I will show you and demonstrate for you how I used both pieces of information to conduct the trade I entered today. And the last point here that I want to mention before moving on to the market coverage, this is not a short squeeze. Regardless 
of what the apes, the Robin Hoodies, and the morons are believing it to be. They have this imaginary enemy that they're fighting against, sticking it to the man, right? Well, the man owns the majority of AMC. The people selling you those call options and buying the underlying shares are Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, Fidelity, and the likes. They're the one who bought at the bottom and will sell at the top. They are the one who get richer when this is all said and done, along with the executives, by the way, who are dumping like crazy. They hit the jackpot. So this is not a short squeeze. Only $1.5 billion were covered last week in short shares. Meanwhile, the stock rated over $20 billion worth of value. So the other 18 and a half more or less came out of the pockets of the people who bought AMC, not short hedge funds covering for their short positions. This is likely to be a gamma squeeze combined with a stampede. And here's yet another piece of evidence. The sheep portfolio versus the suits portfolio. Back during the great short squeeze earlier this year, when we saw the sheep portfolio rack significantly as we saw it today that was on the expense of the suits portfolio underperforming significantly because they have to sell some of their portfolio holdings to cover for their shorts this is not happening this time around suggesting that this is not a short squeeze this is a gamma squeeze combined with a stampede anyhow i got a market to cover i know the apes want to talk about amc all day long but we got other things to talk about and here we go the Dow Industrial Average closing in the green by 25.07 points or a gain of 0.07%. The Nasdaq closing in the green by 19.85 points or a gain of 0.14%. The S&P 500 also closing in the green by 6.8 points or a gain of 0.14%. What about the sector's performance today? Leading the pack at number one and capturing the gold medal, energy, at number two for the silver, real estate, at number three for the bronze, consumer, defensives. So it is a defensive theme in the market today. And of course, you guys have seen the uh, pump prices for the Memorial Day weekend. The prices here in California, well above four bucks a gallon, but they're also rising across the country. Therefore, going into this week, I expected it to be a good week for the energy sector, specifically Chevron. We will see the performance of this stock by the end of the week. But what about the lagging sectors of the market today, led by materials, industrials, and communication services? What about the market breadth, the NYSE? 46% advancing versus 52% declining. The Nasdaq, 42% advancing versus 55% declining. So while the indices closed in the green, the market breadth was not that impressive. Moving on to the futures market, what do we see here? Crude oil Brent and the WTI closing the day in the green with gains of about 1.5% apiece. What about softs? Big rebound day for lumber. Inflation deniers point out at the recent correction in commodity prices and saying, you see, inflation is indeed transitory. Watch out here because commodity prices are rebounding. Matter of fact, the Bloomberg commodity index reached the highest level since 2013. But otherwise, the rest of soft's futures were quiet today, pretty much on the flat line. Perhaps what that's what the uh, movie Quiet Place 2 is all about, soft's futures. But we have a decliner here, closing the day in the downside with about half a percentage point or so, cotton futures. What about metals? Modest gains for gold and silver futures. Meanwhile, copper futures still under a correction. We saw flat activities for platinum and palladium futures. What about meats? A modest down day for lean hogs. The correction storm in commodities did not touch lean hogs yet. But it already touched feeder and live cattle futures, both closing in the green, rebounding higher, specifically live cattle futures for the best part of 2%. What about grains? Massive rebound for soybean oil futures and decent gains for canola and soybeans futures oats and rough rice flat for the day meanwhile the laggards led by corn declining by about two percent or so soybean meal and wheat futures Moving on to the big casino futures, let's start by AMC. When you see a massive gamma squeeze, as we're seeing right now, and the technicals don't hold or the chart 
surpasses the technicals in the case of amc the stock is trading at all-time highs and we cease to have any prior points in the charts where we can base the technicals upon so what we have to do is rely on the technicals we're not going to abandon them completely they're very handy and i will demonstrate that for you during the technical analysis but you have to watch for the options grid because last week the highest open interest was for the 30 strike price the 30 calls and when we hit expiration date last friday as the stock started to reach 30 and beyond a lot of these covered calls started to get exercised a lot of those who bought the 30 calls started to close their positions and therefore you see the stock reacting aka topping at that level you saw a massive reversal right away because every other call option that was bought it was sold as a covered call and therefore triggering a sell-off not a buying frenzy as we saw today we have a fresh new week so we have to watch for options expiring this week you have to take it one week at a time in this case for today's activities the most traded options for amc were the 73 calls with over quarter of a million contracts traded for this particular strike price today alone what does that mean it means that once the stock reaches 73 you will start to see significant reaction by those who are going to close their positions or sell their shares and you're going to see that reaction magnified as we get closer to friday expiration friday so I use this information to conduct the trade that I did today. And tomorrow, we will look at the same table in real time as AMC is trading. We will see where the highest open interest relies, and that will be the top if the stock continues to rise higher. Now, what if the stock goes the other way, drops 10, 20, 30%? You're going to look at the put options and the highest open interest as we reach expiration Friday. What happens when somebody sells a put option? They're obligated to buy the stock. And for my information right now, for this expiration Friday, the $50 put has the highest open interest, meaning if the stock goes down starting tomorrow, 50 will be a good level to take your profits as a short or to buy the dip if you are an ape waiting on the sidelines. Anyhow, back to the casino, the options market. At number one, you guessed it, AMC with over 4 million contracts. This is an insane number. A giant number because 4 million contracts is the equivalent of 400 million shares of the stock. AMC. The entire float has 450 million shares in it. So the entire float of AMC was traded via options today. That's insane. I have never seen anything like this before. And 61% of those options traded for AMC were calls. At number two, here's a surprise, Bank of America. I have calls in this name. Let's hope it pops tomorrow. We'll see. But here it is finishing the day number two with about 1.4 million contracts traded for the name. About 92.5% percent of those were calls massive call options buying for bank of america at number three blackberry with about 1.3 million contracts about 85 percent of those were calls this is also an insane giant number and you see the trend this is evolving into a meme stock story. It started with AMC, but now we have the retail crowd getting excited again, but perhaps finding the opportunity in other names besides AMC, Blackberry, Sundial, Rocket Companies, Beyond Meat, Bed Bath & Beyond. And by the way, last time I showed you the slide of the sheep portfolio versus the suits portfolio, AMC was up big, but costs, Bed Bath & Beyond were actually down. So if you are a smarty pants, you would have caught that. You would have said, wait a minute, this could evolve into a meme stock story, the like of what we saw back in February earlier this year. And therefore, I'm going to start buying costs because I'm expecting costs to pop next. And this is exactly what happened. So now they're finding the opportunity in other names beside AMC. Forget about GameStop. That stock is pricey. The options are very expensive. They're looking for cheap options. AMC now getting too expensive in terms of options. The stock pops 100% and your option pops 180%. That's not good enough. If the stock pops 100%, I'm expecting 5,000% returns. So I'm better off joining the other morons in other names. And therefore, you're seeing a revival of the meme story 
we saw earlier this year. What about the unusual activities taking place in the options market today? Starting with the SPY, the S&P 500. Here we have a bearish trade, an insurance trade, by buying the 350 puts expiration date July 9th. With expectations that the S&P 500 will drop over 16.5% by then. They paid about 57 cents a piece to enter this trade. All in all, spending about $2.6 million for this trade alone. But here is the big one, AMC. And this is a risky one. Oh boy. I don't know who's doing this, but it is certainly not retail traders. We had another trader losing $11 million last week buying puts for AMC. Here is a bigger one. They're buying the $50 puts, and they're not picking this number randomly, by the way. Remember the open interest. Anyhow, the expiration date for this trade is this upcoming Friday, June 4th. They're expecting AMC to drop over 21% by then. And they paid big bucks for this one. Oh boy. Five and a half bucks a piece to enter the trade. And all in all, bringing the total to about 24 million dollars. That's insane. Risking 24 million dollars in two days. This is slightly better than the casino. But again, if they hit, they hit big. We know that these are hedge funds. I know that the morons, the apes, the Robin Hoodies are tapping each other on the back. We're beating the shorties, bro. Hoodle. Till the end. What is the end? Losing your money? Meanwhile, the hedgies are laughing in the background because they are behind the orchestration of this move. They're playing the upside and they will play the downside, making money both ways. Here's another one, the ticker triple BY for Bed Bath & Beyond. What happened to this store? Is it coming back? Is it beating Amazon? Perhaps there is a new business strategy. They're going online. No, no, no. This has nothing to do with the fundamentals. This is a donkey rally going Naruto style, heads first, motivated by greed, by making a quick buck. The problem is, even after they make the quick buck, I mean, take a look at Bed Bath & Beyond, up over 50% in a day. How much more do you want? AMC up 100% for the day. That's not good enough for you. You want more? Well, here's more. And the stock starts to drop. Perhaps you'll appreciate making 100% in a day from a stock trade, not an options trade. These are rare occasions. They almost never happen. So when they happen, and it happens that you are on the ride, you hit the jackpot, you won the lottery, you book your profits, and you let about 10 to 15% of the house money rides. So you don't feel bad if the stock continues to go higher. Anyhow, they're betting that Bed Bath & Beyond will continue to rally higher. But this is interesting. They're betting AMC will drop, but Bed Bath & Beyond will climb higher. By buying the 45 calls expiration date, also this upcoming Friday, June 6th, excuse me, June 4th, with expectations that the name will rise over 11%. They paid about three bucks and 85 cents a piece to enter the trade, bringing the total to about $13 million. What about the trade for the ticker double B, Blackberry? They're betting for more upside by Friday. Here's another wild shot. By buying the 17 calls, expiration date this upcoming Friday, June 4th, with expectations that the name will rise over 14% by then. They paid about two bucks a piece to enter this trade. All in all, bringing the total to about $4.2 million. A million here, a million there, all expiring by the end of the week. And this is why we call it the big casino. What about the XLK, the technology ETF? We have a bearish bet here by buying the 127 and a half puts expiration date june 25th with expectations that the name will drop over eight percent by then they paid about 35 cents a piece to enter the trade. all in all bringing the total to about seven hundred thousand dollars lastly what about the trade for the ticker amd they're buying the 87 calls expiration date june 18th with expectations that the name will rise over six percent by then they paid about 69 cents a piece to enter the trade. all in all bringing the total to about 1.3 million dollars and by the way if you are looking for a short squeeze and i issued this tweet and i followed it by the way i traded this name intraday via call options it is called workhouse and the ticker is wkhs this name has actually over 40 percent of the short flow excuse me of the float shorted meaning the likelihood of igniting a short squeeze is higher 
in Workhouse than it is with the AMC. But again, the reason why I'm trading this intraday, because if AMC goes down, guess what? Workhouse will go down as well in empathy. Moving on to the heat map analysis. The inflationary trade was raging yesterday, not so hot so today, with exception of the energy sector, which is still leading the market. We have financials, industrials, materials, all flat for the day, slightly to the negative side, but we're not seeing a rally in technology or the high multiple names. Matter of fact, even Tesla is leading the decliners, the souffle leading the decliners in the NASDAQ, down about 3% or so. We're not seeing the Archegos names, the high multiple names popping higher. It's all about the meme stocks now. The whole market got reduced into a meme stock story. How could you explain this to your grandchildren? How could you explain this to the next generation? Grandpa is about to tell you a story. Holy shit, I don't know where to start. Grandpa, what is a meme stock? You know what? I don't even know. Go to bed. And I don't know why my grandson is a bird. So nothing to see here, folks. There are some exceptions, some big losses here and there related to earnings and corporate specific news. But the market remains extremely boring here, waiting for the two most important days tomorrow and Friday because we're going to have more macro data, specifically the ADP and the BLS jobs reports. Lots of cooking will be involved, of course, and the bond market will react, sparking a reaction from the stock market. But for now, it remains a meme stock story. What about the themes analysis, the reopening stocks? Nothing going on here. Boring market aside from the meme stocks. Some losses here and there, some gains here and there. But of course, the notable name is the meme stock in this list. AMC. But you want to watch for Chevron because if you bought call options in Chevron, as I did on Friday, expecting the pop after the Memorial Day weekend, these options scored triple digit gains. So while everybody's jumping up and down like a bunch of gorillas shouting and screaming about AMC, there are other opportunities in the market with a lot less risk. I mean, if you're impressed by 100% pop in a day, I can make this for you every single day with a safe, almost guaranteed options trade. 100% a day, that's standard procedure, regular day for options traders, specifically those who know exactly what they're doing. But of course, as options traders, we're not betting our entire portfolio in a single options trade. The apes, on the other hand, they're betting their entire portfolio on AMC. All in, hoodle, to the moon, bro. Till death do us apart. We end up bag holders back in the jungle in Rwanda. What about the high inflation stocks, the inflationary stocks? Nothing's going on here. Some up, some down. No major moves. The market remains boring, lacking a specific theme beside the meme stocks. But again, you're seeing some opportunities in names like Freeport, Martin Moretta, Alcoa, Westrock, all of these are good names. We've been waiting and waiting for a correction in these names to buy the dip. What about the deflationary stocks? The high multiples? Mostly negative picture. They're not getting any action. Peloton, Tesla, Squid, give me a break. That's boring. Tesla, that's for boomers, bro. The new generation trade the hot shit. AMC, Cos, GameStop, Tesla. You kidding me? Moving on to the charts analysis. Starting with the Planet of the Apes, AMC, monthly chart with the Fibonacci retracement levels on the prior highs. The double top that was not surpassed for years and years and years, all the way till the maniacs, the apes, pushed AMC to all time highs. A bankrupt business, or at least was, of course the management doing what they're supposed to, milking the mania, raising an enormous amount of cash, and of course they will dump their stocks, because they know the company, even after the cash injection, isn't worth anywhere where it's trading right now. But you see last week, the chart respected the Fibonacci replacement levels. That was the top right there, around 30, 35. Now, the chart has surpassed the majority of the Fibonacci replacement levels, and it is pretty much the sky's the limit. So what do you do when the chart reaches that point? You use the Fibonacci retracement levels intraday to trade the stock as a day trader. Now, I'm not a day trader, but I'm willing to engage in a day trade here and there. I used to be a day trader at some point, and I use the Fibonacci retracement levels to make a quick trade and a quick buck. Here's an example. This is the three minutes chart of AMC. And this is exactly the point where I entered the day trade for AMC. The stock was trading, already gapping higher, 20, 30% right off the bat. But then we saw a massive surge in volume and the stock started to go parabolic. 
Then we saw the halt, and that was the top right there. So I used the Fibonacci retracement levels, knowing that I have a top. What happened? You see the massive red candle to the downside, followed by a rebound. That was rebound number one from another Fibonacci retracement level. And then the stock started to climb higher again, and it caught support from a higher Fibonacci level creating a higher high and then it did it again for the next Fibonacci level creating a series of higher highs once the chart started to surpass the top it became extremely evident to me that AMC is going higher and we haven't seen the top for the day so I bought AMC at about 59 bucks a share now where do I set my exit point remember the options which call option had the highest open interest the 73 call now, usually the stock is not going to go to 73 exactly before pulling back. It will go close, 72.80, 72.90, and then pull back because traders will start to take that action ahead of time. And therefore, I set my exit point a little conservative at 72.5. And here's what happened next for AMC. The stock popped higher and I sold at 72 and a half. That was about 23% profit in, out, hello, goodbye. But what do you know? The stock consolidated from that point on respecting the Fibonacci retracement levels. Depending whether the stock opens up or down tomorrow, I might have another intraday trade. Anyhow, moving on to the regular market, the mankind human being market. How about the SPY 30 minutes chart? Nothing is going on here. Consolidating around the level of 420, which was too high for the market. So what is the market doing right now? It is consolidating building up energy to break above 420 once and for all meaning that this is a bullish consolidation not a bearish one but if the chart continues to gather that energy day after day after day and it is not released to the upside as expected that energy will be released to the downside and the chart has been consolidating for days and days and days without popping higher matter of fact it got rejected the moment it hit 422 that was the gap and crap but for now you take it as it is it is bullish consolidation it turns bearish if the chart closes from a daily chart perspective cutting the support of 417.30 what about the daily chart for the continuous contract of the spy again it is a bullish consolidation right underneath the very important resistance level of 4232 it is building the energy to pop higher this is the assumption but if we see another harsh rejection from 4232 then the chart is not ready to pass that resistance level and it needs to go down to a prior level of support to gather the energy needed to break above the resistance where is the next level of support we have a lot of soft support but the strongest one is 3960 that will be a steep drop if the s p 500 goes all the way down there for now the bulls have the advantage what about the Qs? 30 minutes chart what's going on here similar story with the spy bullish consolidation in range around the level of 335 you're not going to turn bearish against this chart until it breaks 330 and a half from a daily perspective. And even then, I wouldn't be comfortable going short. I want to see the cues cutting the support of 326. For me, that will be an ominous signal. What about the daily chart? Can we see anything different here? Not at all. We talked about the importance of 13,718. This was the top of the reversal candle. So far, the NASDAQ is consolidating underneath that level building the energy to pop higher. In case of a failure, the reverse will happen. The energy will be released to the downside. What is the threshold? 13,599. Closing below that level, from a weekly perspective, but even from a daily perspective, will signal upcoming weakness for the queues. It is not ready to break above 13,718, but for now, the bulls have the advantage. It is a bull flag consolidation what about the iwm small caps what's going on here we still have a gap that hasn't been filled yet we have at least two or three of them that were not filled yet but the most important one at the level of three excuse me 223 because this is the next level of support and the most important one to keep for the iwm for now nothing is going on here consolidating and grinding a little higher and that is the difference between the spy the Qs, and the iwm the iwm also consolidating but it is grinding higher and the reason is all of these meme stocks are included in the russell 2000 or at least the majority of them and they are helping the russell to outperform the other three indices
What about the daily chart for the RUT, the Russell 2000? Once again, if the chart is trading above 2,264, then the bulls have the advantage, and they have the momentum indicators now on their side, the RSI and MACD indicators. For me, the most important closing is the weekly closing, but one has to remember, this chart has been consolidating all the way since the beginning of the year. There is an explosive move coming. The more consolidation the chart does, the likelihood is that the break will come to the upside, not the downside, because the chart had all the time in the world to break to the downside and it refused to do so. It continued to consolidate for month and month and month, meaning that the next move will be higher. It is too early to make that assumption for the IWM and the Russell 2000 because we have a reopening, stay at home play here. The expectations on one hand versus the actual performance of the reopening. Sell the news. That is still on the table. What about the DXY, the dollar index, the Dixie, Tricky Dixie, lots of names for the US dollar. The bottom line is we're looking for the level of 90. So far, Tricky Dixie has been playing games, consolidating underneath the very important level of 90, but not making a definitive move one way or the other. The momentum indicators, the MACD and the RSI, are starting to turn positive. Furthermore, we're seeing a descending line that is about to be broken to the upside. Then we have the saucer bottoming formation, all indicating, that at least for the short term, the US dollar is bottoming and the next move should be higher. I say should from a technical perspective, but again, anything could happen specifically in relation to what the Federal Reserve and the upcoming jobs report will show. What about gold? Gold running out of gas here. It had an impressive rally after consolidating around the level of 1,750. And you see the energy from that consolidation being released with a massive move going all the way to 1,900. But the move is getting exhausted from a daily perspective, running out of gas. If the US dollar pops higher, for whatever reason, technical or otherwise, gold will start trading to the downside. That will be a short-term bottom, perhaps retracing all the way to 1850 and then rebounding higher. So if you played the move in gold, perhaps this is a point where you want to consider taking profits, taking chips off the table. What about yields? What's going on here? We had the double bottom, the support, 1.55, the resistance, 1.62, going back and forth, back and forth, consolidating within that range. We have a critical day ahead of us. Thursday and then Friday, the most important day. Yields will make a definitive move, in my opinion, by Friday, whether to believe the transitory inflation story from the Federal Reserve or to realize that inflation perhaps is going out of whack and out of control of the Federal Reserve. But the most important point to remember is that the reaction will depend on the number, and the number can be interpreted either way. Last time around, when we got a low number, inflation deniers celebrated by saying, you see, inflation is transitory. The jobs market is cooling off again. What are these uh, alarmists, these inflationistas are talking about? We're talking about the fact that jobs openings, you morons, are climbing higher significantly. Meanwhile, the BLS cooked number shows that the economy only created 200,000 jobs, a little over 200,000 jobs. Okay, that means that we are heading into wage inflation because job openings are high, but the jobs filled are low, meaning you need to incentivize those workers waiting on the sidelines to take these jobs openings. Therefore, wages go higher. On the other hand, if the number comes out excellent, creating 1 million, 2 million jobs, then the inflationary argument also wins. Look at all the spending. Look at all the hiring. So one way or the other, the inflationary side will win. So the best way for the cooks at the Bureau of Labor statistics is to release a number in the middle, tamed, confusing, 600,000 jobs, 600 and a half, 700 at the most. And of course, yields, the dollar, and gold will react to that number. What about the TLT weekly perspective? Again, the momentum indicators are correcting. The oversold conditions are correcting, but not resulting in a massive pop in the TLT. What does that say? It says that perhaps the short squeeze are not going to happen. Are we going to see lows for the TLT? But for now, solidifying 134.5 as a very solid strong bottom at least for the short term but watch out if these oversold conditions if this negative momentum is corrected and turned into bullish momentum but the chart doesn't move that much it consolidates between 135 145 then the next move will be significantly lower because all of that recovery in momentum 
did not result in a massive pop, meaning that the power is still on the hands of bears. Bond bears, not stock market bears. I guess they're the same because if yields climb higher, the stock market, at least technology, will not do so good. What about the VIX? What's going on here? Lost a lot of momentum from the highs, closed below 20 for the week, but it is also bottoming at the same levels of about 17 and a half. It is not ready to go below 17 and a half. It is extremely tricky here for the market because on one hand, the inflationary trade is still working and that will push the S&P 500 higher or at least stabilize the S&P 500. On the other hand, we have inflation fears. We have this uh, meme stock rally that could jeopardize the market at some point. And we have a lack of catalyst for the market to rally higher beside the reopening, the stimulus, infrastructure, which is already priced in the market. So therefore, the market is becoming boring, not moving one way or the other. And you see that reflection right away in the VIX also being boring, sliding to the downside slowly but surely, and not popping higher. For now, there is no fear in the street. Will the jobs report change that perspective? That is the million dollars question, because whatever the outcome of the employment report, that will spark the tapering discussion. Whether tapering will happen sooner or later than expected, and that will impact the market and perhaps reignite that fear, the taper tantrum, and that will spark the VIX higher. We're watching the level of 20 for the weekly closing, closing below 20 for yet another week, and that will be a warning signal for market bears. What about Apple? 30 minutes chart. What's going on here? We had a series of higher highs. That was broken right away and therefore the bullish trend, the rebound is over. And you saw the chart melting all the way down to the support of 125. Undercutting that support for a little while but it is doing the saucer bottoming, holding, not ready to go lower, even challenging the resistance now support of 125. So the assumption is that Apple is gathering energy to give it another shot at breaking above 127 and a half in or around that soft resistance level that it failed to break above before. What about Tesla, the souffle? What's going on here? Losing momentum. The RSI indicator is curling downward. So is the MACD indicator. We talked about 629. This is the most important level to watch. Tesla is reversing before breaking above 629. Not looking so good here, but it's too early to say that the souffle is dead and let's short and buy put options because the chart has not pulled away from 629 significantly. Closing at about 605, for me closing another day below 600, perhaps that would be the signal to buy put options. And here is the uh, 30 minutes perspective or the souffle again. 629, the chart tried for a few hours, few days, it failed to do so, it got rejected. Is it a harsh rejection, meaning it's over? Not really, it could give it another shot tomorrow, and therefore I'm not jumping the gun. What about the tulip market? What's going on with the flowers? Not the good flowers that you can smoke, but you know the imaginary flowers that don't even exist. They're bottoming too. The momentum indicators for BTC Bitcoin are starting to turn from bearish to bullish. But the threshold is, can you break above 42,000 and reclaim that level for support until, and unless that happens, I wouldn't feel comfortable buying the dip until I see 42,000 being reclaimed as support. But the chart is making higher highs. That is a classic, at least short-term bottoming. And remember, the majority of the sentiment in the action has shifted from cryptos back into meme stocks. Therefore, perhaps the chart will consolidate between 30,000 and 42,000 for a while here. The longer it does that, the worse it will become for the bulls, because that will mean that the next move is likely to be breaking the support of 30,000, not breaking the resistance of 42,000. What about Doge? What's going on? As you might know, I joined the morons and I'm now long Doge. Let's go to the moon, bro. And beyond, uh, 500,000 per Doge. How about that? Not really. I'm what you call a traveler, not a hoodler. I bought Doge and I'm eyeing the 59 cents level as an exit. That could be too greedy. I mean, it will be nice if it happens. Reverend Elon tweeted something today. Who cares what it is? It has Doge in it. And that was enough to spark a rally in Dogecoin. That's all what it takes. It's a tweet based uh, stock, currency, asset, piece of garbage. Doesn't matter. It moves based on tweets from Reverend Elon. Uh, we have the Coinbase inclusion so i'm playing that too but again closing above 45 cents that will be satisfactory for me i might take profits right there in out hello goodbye i'm a traveler i'm not a hoodler i'm not a moron i'm not an ape I'm not a donkey i'm not a robin hoodie
I'm just an opportunist. What about ETH, Ethereum? Following the footsteps of Bitcoin, making higher highs, the momentum indicators are turning bullish. So for all intents and purposes, ETH should also bottom. Does it mean that we're going to have a massive rally ahead, but it could consolidate here for a while? Perhaps meme stocks will crash and we will see that rotation for memes back to cryptos. Anyhow, moving on to the conclusion of this video. What do we have on the economic calendar tomorrow? Very important day. We have the ADP employment report. We have the per usual weekly jobless claims. We have unit labor cost. This is the revision for the first quarter. That will be very important if it is revised higher. Watch out here. We have the services, PMI and ISM indicators. And then we have Harker and Kaplan, the defectors, the rebels speaking tomorrow. And then we have more propagandists speaking. Who cares? Anyhow, that's all I got for you tonight. And I will talk to you again tomorrow. If you found the information presented in this video helpful, please subscribe, press the like button, the notification button, and follow me on social media.